Hey, welcome back everyone to another video. So after a long trip, I finally arrived in Japan. And since I was kind of busy preparing for the trip, I didn't get to do any work. So I thought I'd do a bit of a story time again. And this time I'll talk about being an indie and what kind of advantages and what kind of disadvantages does this have. Now I'm staying in a shared house in Japan, so I apologize if my voice is a tiny bit quiet, but I don't want to disturb my neighbors too much. So I'll start off with the advantages. So one of the advantages of being an indie is that you can work from anywhere, like I'm doing right now. I didn't have to take any holidays or ask my boss for any days off or anything like that since I don't have a boss, I am my own boss pretty much. So I can work from anywhere that I'd like, whether that's a cafe in town or a different town or even the other side of the world. So another advantage is that you're not bound to any hours. So you don't actually have to work from 9 to 5 or anything like that. You can just work whenever you like. And as I'm kind of a night owl, I tend to work during the night. It's really nice and quiet. And especially for programming, it's nice to just have complete silence around you. So another advantage is that you have complete creative freedom of the project. There's no one telling you to use this kind of art or go for this kind of music or gameplay or whatever. You pretty much have complete control over the project. And this is personally the biggest advantage for me since I don't like giving away control to other people. I have an image in my head and that's pretty much how I want the game to be. So another advantage is that you don't have any deadlines. This is kind of a two-edged sword, I'll talk about this later, but having no deadlines is really relaxing and really does save you a lot of stress. When you have a deadline, you're really rushing to get towards the deadline and you end up cutting corners and the game tends to suffer. So lastly is you can take pride in what you made. A lot of people always ask me, being a Nintendo fanboy, don't you want to work at Nintendo? And for me that actually sounds like hell. Even though I really love Nintendo, I really don't want to work at a company. I don't want to be just a single name in a list of a thousand names of people who made this one enemy or made this one piece of art or just one gameplay element. Doing all the aspects of the game, the programming, the art, the music, pretty much everything, I can really take pride in the game and really say, this is my game, I made this game. So what are the disadvantages of being an indie? The first one is that it's pretty lonely, especially as a solo developer. I personally do everything by myself and it gets really lonely. There's no one around me while I'm working. I'm just alone in my room 99% of the time. And it's not uncommon that I don't see any people for a few days. So another disadvantage is that you cannot get any feedback from team members. Whenever I'm working on a new feature or a piece of art or a piece of music, I really just want to ask someone, hey, what do you think of this? Or, hey, how would you do this? But since I'm alone, I just don't have anyone to ask that. And that's also one of the reasons why I started the YouTube channel to get some feedback from other people. And I'm really glad that you guys are always so responsive in the comments. It really helps me out with this particular issue. So coming back to the deadline, having no deadline is also a disadvantage since you kind of start slacking. There's no particular date on which you have to finish a feature and you kind of end up just saying oh, I'll just do this next week or oh I'll just do this another time and you really end up slacking it really requires a lot of discipline to finish a game by yourself so another disadvantage of doing everything yourself is you cannot be a professional at all the different things that you do so I'm mostly a programmer and kind of an artist second so I really struggle with art and in the time that I make a single character an actual artist would have made like three or five 
I'm really slow at inefficient at doing art and sometimes you just wish that you'd have someone who is actually good at this stuff. So the last one is kind of a major one and kind of a showstopper for most people who want to go indie. You don't have any financial security, so you don't have an actual wage, you don't get monthly payouts or anything like that. You kind of work on a game and at the end you just have to pray that it becomes successful. Fortunately right now I can still continue to work based on the earnings that I get from Spirit Sphere DX. It's not a lot but it's just enough to get me through. So that's it for this week's video. I apologize if I was a bit hard to understand but I just have to be a tiny bit more quiet from now on. So I'm planning to continue to work on the game as normal from now on. So hopefully next week will be just a normal devlog video again. So I hope you guys enjoyed all the footage from Japan. I tried to document my trip a little bit. So hopefully it turned out interesting. So thank you guys for watching once again. And I'll see you guys next week.